Welcome along, boys, to another round of the Sim Racing Online GT1 series. Um, this time it's round two, the second race of the championship. We are in the uh, Czech Republic uh, forest of Masaryk in Brno. Um, such an iconic track for what regards uh, motorbike racing. It's a very iconic location. And uh, it was used to host the GT1 series back in the 90s and the uh, 2000s. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be nice to uh, tackle this track. It's the first time that we uh, use these cars on the track, actually. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be interesting to see how the drivers can cope with the differences that this track has um, compared to Silverstone, which is a different layout and a different type of car specification uh, based track so um, i'm looking forward to uh, see what the drivers will be doing both on uh, setup level and strategy because uh, it's a technical track um, and so you need to balance both the front axle and the rear axle to use the maximum amount of tires but also not uh, have excessive wear so the, um, it's going to be interesting to see how the, the guys are going to are going to approach the race um, in a few minutes we will show the intro for the series again uh, we have prepared a little uh, opening that we will use for all the remaining rounds in fact of this series the sim racing online gt1 2010 series if you want to be part of the spectacle just join simracingonline.co.uk um, where they have many many things going on uh, not only r factor 2 but also uh, project cars uh, i racing and um, mostly r factor 2 i would say but if you're an assetto corsa competizione uh, guy then go check them out they have a few leaks going on as well um, so yeah uh, they are so passionate and you should check them out. This race is going to be a, for sure entertaining as the last one, for sure. I'm very looking forward to what is going to happen in the first row because last time we had a very great battle between uh, Tony Talvice, Johnny Gutierrez, Nick. Oh yeah, Johnny Gutierrez and Nick Newcomb as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Many new names uh, in the sim racing online scene coming in for these amazing uh, kind of vintage GT cars uh, championship. So it's it's nice to see new faces coming up uh, in the championship, and uh, really it, it does make the difference between most of the leagues in R Factor Two because this is a league made of passionate people. Uh, that love competition but also good fun and these cars are certainly up to the task now we're just approaching free practice um it should be starting in about one well, minute he's starting right now as you can yeah, see well, yeah, sorry about that. Jam. and uh and don't forget yeah. uh, hi everyone by the way i'm rick uh i would say don't forget that these drivers are very very clean uh, I read with them sometimes. Everyone is very, very clean on this league, so it's uh, very fun to drive with these guys. So I just to say, uh, join if you can, because you, you're going to have fun even if you are battling for the last position. And that's for sure. Absolutely. And uh, I'm looking forward to see who will come out on top in terms of manufacturer well, because we saw the Ford the 4GT Matek um, was the strongest car. Oh, as we see Talvice going off. There is the, they are on the outlap, so yeah, they can. Cold tires. I don't cold know. tires. It looks to be sunny, although not particularly sunny. We so don't have sun, any sun weather red, update, so. but for sure right now the quality should be sunny.
in let's see this is a very very weak big tricky tricky track <laughs> if you can say that uh it's gonna be fun to see who has the best setup right now uh we saw that the lamborghini and the 4gt were the two fastest cars on the last race uh i don't know if the johnny gutierrez has found the needle uh with his uh with his corvette uh it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun to see uh Gutierrez was one of the fastest guys in the first team yeah, of definitely. the silverstone race although uh, his corvette suffered uh, some tire issues uh, later in the race it looked to be very loose uh, in the, especially in the fast corners um it looks to be tidier uh here in Bruno, of course the cars are running more downforce here because it's a much more technical track um, great livery on the Corvette as always as we see Johnny Gutierrez uh, in the first sector of the track trying to set his first lap in qualifying we can definitely and say that the Ford was the best looking car on tire management and uh, stability yeah. As but for the Lamborghini, it was the most unstable, but uh, it was very fast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Remember what John said on the interview after the race? He said that the general thing is that the Lamborghini is the fastest car, and as we see Nick Newcomb, the new entry who made a very good race, an incredible race on his uh, debut on Silverstone with a, an astonishing P2. Uh, it was stopped only by Talvice, which was really faster than everybody else on the track. Uh, yes. So let's see, let's see how we how we can what he can pull off right now. Yeah, and the fastest first sector for Nick Newcomb on the Murcielago looks to be very very quick indeed. A little bit loose there, but was able to keep it up. Uh, we can say as far me and Rick we drove this car. These cars are loose, or seems to be loose, but they, are, they go fast by doing that. So, yeah, sometimes yeah. on a quality right. lap, for Powerful sure. Powerful second sector as well for Nick. This is going to be a good lap. Oh, it's oh. now personal best because somebody improved. I think we, still, we are still far from the... Yes. An optimal lap, lap so yeah, 48, I, yeah, as I said, yeah, 48, 48. <laughs> and he did, Johnny Gutierrez did the 148, but, uh, 48, 1, probably, let's probably. give them yeah, one lap, 48, 1, 6, 6 for Johnny yeah, Gutierrez, no, what a good lap. Uh, almost one second clear, um, from, uh, Brown, now, VDS also very close, 1.0 seconds, uh, Nick Newcomb, on the other hand, is improving in the first sector. Although he's uh, two seconds off the pace right now. Uh, Rob Milliken taking P5 with a good lap, 151. Nice, nice job. Absolutely, and uh, Mike Volley in P6. I'm impressed with Mike Volley uh, for now. Roberto Balli. He was one of the top runners in the 4GT Matek Engineering. Yeah, uh, and Barrett Erickson. Nice Barrett lap, Erickson, Barrett yeah. we, we, we haven't seen him really in the most uh, brilliant form, I would say, in Silverstone. He was on the back foot, probably yeah. not able to find a good He had a contact at the setup. beginning of the race, from what I remember. He had a big contact at the beginning of the race. Uh, so he had to make his way back into the best position yeah uh, it was involved in the first corner crash uh at the beginning of the race if you missed it guys uh, look up for sim racing online on youtube they have the full silverstone race right there on their channel um john vidigas coming up towards the final corner crossing the uh, line at 150.5 we have something very strange for the first time ever and nobody improved on the second lap. Everybody did the first lap very fast, and they were not oh. able. As we see, he go off. Let's see if he can get back to the box. He lost the rear under braking. 
you know, you know, Sam. Uh, as we so know, right now, John Woody guys should not be able to go back on track. Yeah. So well, his quality is done. His quality is done. His time is not not bad. Forty-one nine, forty-one, forty-nine one. Sorry, uh, it's not a bad. Not bad. Let's see if everybody else can take a a better time. And I don't know because. Oh, we can, which team the fastest guy, even on this truck, is not, he still hasn't made a, a single lap. Right now, he's Great. making the lap. He's making it right he's, now. Uh, okay, he's perfect. improving, he's improving in the first yeah. sector. 34.6. You, you know, Sam probably by saying that no one is doing the, their best lap on the second lap, uh, as we we have been driving the cars uh, around a bit on Silverstone. Uh, I think that the Purple. general idea, idea is that these cars are very loose on the, ba on the back and you tend to use very much tires, so probably you have just one lap to get your time done. After that, your tires have may maybe have too much usage on, on them to get uh, another good lap. And so he gets to the one. He oh, oh, tops the charts with a 147.4. He's the first driver to go below the 148 mark with a cracking effort from Tony Televisia in the 4GT. So the 4GT definitely looks to be up to the standards that were showed in yeah, Silverstone. Gutierrez, on the other hand, showing that the Ford is not only not the only American car um, fighting for the win, is now 6 tenths behind Tony Talvice, I'm pretty sure Johnny is going to try to get the pole position here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then look how he's wearing his tires. He's, he's uh, putting the much. heat into, putting heat into the tires. Now, you do not want to overheat the tires though before the actual lap, because this is a technical track, very fast sweeping corners, so the heat really goes into the tires by uh, natural. And the Johnny Gutierrez is now crossing the line to begin his time lap. Let's see how he does. Definitely. Most likely, the second lap, your tire are so much overheated that you cannot be precise yeah, probably, on probably. the rear. So that's the reason yeah. behind that. So th this is a big, uh, a big possibility for the race because you know it's gonna be who is capable of keeping the tires uh, on the right. Uh, he on the right temperature and on the right side. Probably this this is where you are gonna are gonna win the race. Because if you overheat the tire, the, the your tire is too much. Probably you have ooh. He lost the back. Some kind first of former <laughs> Yes. Yeah, first sector. I'm pretty sure he lost. He lost a bit of time. Yeah, yeah. He's aborting. For sure. And he's aborting, he's aborting the lap. lap. It's a shame because his first sector was almost two tenths. Uh, faster than what Talvice had showed before. I wonder how Newcomb, the guy who finished in second place in uh, Silverstone, is actually doing yeah. right now. He's right there in the Lamborghini setting Fine. his personal personal best in the first sector. Um, Muschelago looking tidy but not fast enough in the corners. Yeah, probably on Silverstone the Murcielago was uh, one of the best cars because we saw how much this car had a high top, top speed uh, compared to the other cars. Uh, no, it's not an high speed, uh, it's not me meant to uh, top speed cars because uh, you don't have that much of straights, long straights. Uh, so, probably Lamborghini is not really the car to drive on this truck, uh, which is going to be fun to see because you don't have clearly overtaking points on this, uh, on this circuit. Uh, you don't have much strong brakes uh, or anything else. So let's see where anyone can overtake. And Newcomb, what a good lap. 148. Good lap from Newcomb. He improved by a big amount. He's now in P4, just shy of uh, Brown's time in 1.1 uh, second slower than Talvice. Talvice and Gutierrez look to be on another planet today. Pretty, it's similar to what we saw on Silverstone. Probably on Silverstone were more drivers close because we see a good battle between Newcomb, Gutierrez, and Vidi Gas. Uh, but still, Talvite seems to be the, the guy to catch. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, VD guessed uh, 1.7 seconds. That's a big amount of time. As we now see Paul Abham in the Aston Martin is now um, effectively in P11 and trying to crack the top 10. The Aston Martin not being the fastest car as expected. Oh, is locking up the tires up. big time in the right hander, yeah. leaning on the curb on the outside. A good entry there in the next right hander. Uh, Aston Martin does look a bit loose, I'll tell you that. It does look a bit nervous. Yeah, it was definitely not the. It was the, the feeling was that this car was not the fastest. Uh, everyone had tried it. Uh, everyone went for the Ford GT or the um, the Murcielago. The Murcielago is pretty pretty fast on the streets. Uh, the Ford GT is very stable. Uh, it's incredibly stable compared to the others. So this is why probably we have much of uh, we have the, the top with Ford GT. Uh, oh, and I see an MC12. Finally, we had no MC12 on the on the last race on Silverstone. Yeah, that's the first Maserati MC12. I didn't quite see the driver who is driving yeah, you know. the Silva, Silva, Silva. Yeah. Silva, Silva, the former champion from the IMSA series, the DPI multi-class uh, series with the yellow and black, very shiny livery. The what Maserati, what a, what a great looking car that is. Every time we the see Silva, the Silva, we have a special livery. Uh, it's not improving, so the Maserati is proving to be a, a tricky car to drive, yeah. as we know. And also, I would like to say that this is a car with a very long wheelbase. So, in a technical track like this, is not ideal. Uh, yeah, the Silva lines up in with a 158. I am pretty sure that was an outlap or an aborted lap. He's now going for another effort. I'm pretty sure this is going to be his last. Lap. This this car seems to be really nervous on the exit. Look at how the Silva is correcting his his lines on the exit. Pretty much. Nervous. He's also his debut today, so yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's that's the first time we see him here. So. And by the way, guys, we still don't see any of the Nissan. No one has to the Nissan. Probably. Uh, oh, the Nissan right is very slow. Yeah, yeah. We tried it and well. Is the most understeering car of the grid. It was terrible to drive, to be honest. Surprisingly, today and we have only two Lamborghini. Only two of them. Yeah, the everyone's on the on the Ford B or the Aston Martin. Yeah. Tony Talvice looking very, very on, very much on the edge, going for another lap yeah. with if less than ever... 30 seconds left in the no, session, but it's a mistake. Lap aborted. Mike Wally improves. He's now P11. And look at uh, Johnny Gutierrez not gonna be happy. Johnny Gutierrez with Gil da Silva is not, not gonna, gonna be happy be... about it. Everybody's yeah, is not struggling with the rear. Da Silva is driving. Um, Johnny Gutierrez was on a flying lap, so maybe Da Silva will get a penalty for that. And this is the problem I told you before on Bruno. There are no clearly overtaking corners or points it's very difficult for me to overtake on this truck uh, so you have to build uh, and create the space on the truck so it's gonna be fun to see how the drivers are going to manage this because the risk and, uh, is if you are stuck behind someone who's low you you can maybe lose very much time and without big straight to be able to get the, the draft it's gonna be it's gonna be fun it's gonna be hard Probably. Checker flag is out. Tony Talvice tops the charts with a 147.4, although there are people improving. Uh, Pablo Finotti setting the personal best first sector, but is way off the pace. Uh, currently running in P10. Top four, the top five are already in the box, so we can yeah. clearly say Tony Talvice did the pole. Yeah, that's the one forty seven point four. And Pinot is the last guy, and then Ericsson he didn't improve. Pinot, but P six. Pinot and Ericsson jumping Coelho in uh, P six. So big names in the top six. Talvice, the winner from last time. Yeah, absolutely. Gutierrez. Absolutely. Uh, we know Gutierrez being the former GT three driver and champion, in fact, of the IMSA series. 
Uh, Brown in P3 with a one, just shy of Tony, uh, Johnny Gutierrez's lap. Nick Newcomb, the guy who finished in second place in Silverstone in P4 in the Lamborghini Murcielago, and John Vidigest, uh, so Tony Taldice's teammate, in P5. Yeah, and yeah. we are now in the warm up session. We are going to show the intro for the GT1 2010 championship. Uh, this is the starting grid, as you can see. Tony Salvice starting in the pole position. Johnny Gutierrez falling. He's too fast. Hold on. Yeah. We can restart this. Tony Salvice is in uh, P1, as we uh, just saw in qualifying. Johnny Gutierrez lining up in second place with the Corvette C6 RGT1. Phil Brown in the Matech Engineering 4GT in P3. You Nick Andrew Newcomb Brown, by in, the way. Oh uh, yeah, Phil Brown is a rookie in this series and great showing in qualifying already. Yeah. Nick Newcomb in uh, in fourth place, first Lamborghini of the lot. Then we have John Vidigas in uh, P5. Um, a great result for Bart Eriksson in P6. A big improvement from Silverstone. Didier Coelho, the uh, another. 4GT in P7, Roberto Balli, uh, expert in Assetto Corsa races, uh, lines up in yeah. P8, Rob Milken, non non nonetheless another... champion of the last ACC season, <laughs> nonetheless. Yeah, Rob Milliken in P9, the Corvette C6, Pablo Finotti, another rookie in the 4GT, cracks the top 10, Mike Volick, first Aston Martin in the field in uh, P11, Mark High 3 P12, Paul Abham in the other Aston Martin in P13, Thomas Holsel in P14, Christian Dauger P15, Dan Hook, another rookie uh, in the Corvette, lands up in P16. It was about five seconds off of Tony Talvice's lap. Uh, Lewis Middleton uh, in P17, Ed, Ed Jones in P18, Joe Pinder lands up in 19th place, Michael Lobel P20, Stephen Wenham in uh, P21 and finally, last but not least, the Maserati MC12 of Gilles da Silva. Uh, big field today, guys. And, yeah, uh, big one. Big yeah, one. 22. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully is, uh, it's going to be close pack for this Brno yeah. tracking race. Seems a close pack. Uh, for what we saw, the, the, re the two guys who can Right for the victory right now are Talviti and Gutierrez. So the other guys are seems to be a little bit slower. Uh, probably a big. I expect a big fight for the for the last mm, last place on the podium for the P3. Because Brown, Newcomb, Vidigast, and Ericsson are very close to each other. 
uh, like 5 cents, if I uh, remember well. Uh, so let's see if what we can do, because we, we know the race is long. Uh, these cars are very uh, difficult to drive, so it's important not to make, mis to make mistakes, not to overheat tires, mm, to manage your tires good, to manage your, your fuel. Uh, I think with this car is, is the most important part. So let's see what happens, really. I'm yeah, fuel plays a big role, as we saw in Silverstone. Most of the people were caught out by the fuel usage that these cars uh, had, and most of the most of the time, people needed to do a second stop um, to do a splash and dash and finish the race because they were short of gasoline. So these cars are not uh, as forgiving as you might think. They are faster than the normal. GT3 cars that we are yeah. used to yeah, now, definitely. and uh, for example, the Maserati MC12, the new entry for today's race, mounts a V12 engine, as does the Lamborghini Murcielago. Uh, most of the other cars mount a V8 engine, so uh, they are overall bigger than the average yeah, GT3 car. Yeah, and because these cars are very much more raw, if we can say that, uh, instead of the GT3s. Uh, no traction control, no ABS, uh, incredible powerful engine because they almost have the full horsepower that the stock car has. Uh, instead of the GT3s, which are lower on the high horsepower than about 200, because if you think that the 488 has around seven, 720 horsepower, probably. Or around 600, that. 620, I think. Yeah. Is the right uh, number. So GT3 cars are limited um, electronically yeah. to about 500 horsepower. So yeah, uh, these cars were a completely different machine as yeah. we now begin and the formation lap with uh, Tony Telvice in P1. Also, the aerodynamic of the, these cars is really, really useless you don't have this much aerodynamic that the GT3s have. So these cars are literally low power and you have to manage them with your throttle, your braking. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough in a technical circuit like Bernal. That is right, Ricardo. As I joined a little bit late, as I, I'm sure Lorenzo got the introduction. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be quite a race, isn't it, Lorenzo and Ricardo? Absolutely, and uh, as we, na we now see the 4GT is being the most, you know, dominating car as it, by the looks of it. Um, it's a one-hour race, so plenty of action packed into 60 minutes of Johnny pure Gutierrez. racing. Tony Calvice in P1, Johnny Gutierrez in the Corvette. I'm pretty uh, curious to see how, yeah. how Johnny is gonna is gonna do today. Johnny seems the only guy who has managed to use the Corvette. To make the Corvette quick, the other guys yeah, are he's the only, he's the only one being the able to find the Corvette is mainly can MP9, I think. Well, it, it seems like we are missing Osama today. I haven't seen him. Yeah, yeah, we missed them. We, we missed him today. And what a pity, because could have could have been a big fight between him and Salvitia and Gutierrez. Yeah, uh, I heard he, he had quite another race in another league, so maybe that could have intervened and didn't let him to join. But nonetheless, we got Tony Talviti, Johnny, Phil, Nick Newcomb, and John Viti Guest. All of those four are well qualified to snatch a win today. So stay tuned for that, as I believe they're still doing the formation lap. Is that correct, Loretto? Yeah, it's the last corner of this, I think. The last corner. Yeah, the last. Oh. Corner that that are coming up towards the last section of the track. Now, uh, what I am most concerned of, uh, of more concerned about, is John Vidigas and Barrett Erickson are gonna ha are gonna have to, you know, push in the beginning of the race. This is gonna put an incredible amount of pressure on the Phil Brown and Nick Newcomb, as they're the cars that were very much up to the pace, but not quite up to Tony Talvice and Johnny Gutierrez. The only hope for yeah. those guys is if and Johnny Gutierrez is able to overtake uh, Tony Talvice. 
Well, it looks we like the race the got the start. formation for the race, what the first formation for the start. And we're up, we're up guys, 15. Tony Talvice retains P1 as Johnny Gutierrez lines up in second. John Vidigas, what an amazing start from him. Yeah, big one, big start. Probably Newton not, not being P3. so ready. He's a couple cars. Newton Van Brown not being so ready on the start. And let's see that Ericsson is now on the attack of Newton. Well, Ericsson actually fighting with uh, what I believe to be Dier Coelho in the, for, in the other uh, Ford. So many things happen at the first lap. I mean, the first lap is always when things needs to uh, stir a bit, and then suddenly we start seeing the cars starting to separate a little bit. The first few laps, it's gonna be jam packed. Our uh, video guest is less than a second now behind Johnny Gutierrez. He's in the podium, made up about four places from the start, and Phil Brown and Nick Newcomb had to settle for the P4 and P5 for now. But it's not far from over yet, as we have Mike Volick right now attacking Rob Milliken in the Corvette, running the Aston in what seems to be like the stop. Maybe it's looking it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, a hell of a race today. Absolutely, as we see Tony Talvisa now gapping Johnny Gutierrez by three seconds almost. So Johnny Gutierrez not being able to match his pace. Uh, John Vidigas is very close though to Johnny Gutierrez, so... Yeah, what a first lap point, Toby. Yeah. 2.7 seconds on the first lap. What a first lap. Yeah, absolutely breathtaking by the... Uh, look at the mud clock livery on that Corvette. I, I absolutely love that, that livery. Look at it. Ooh, they touched Oh, and the uh, contact. Yeah, I saw that. What is guys? Pop the... A bit of a contact there as uh, Rob Milliken, Mike, and Malik and Paul Aitken are fighting for that P9, all close to each other right now, three yeah. cars. And we're not the only the top 10 get points in this championship, so you're, you're really looking to get the P, at least you can, to get one point in the championship. And Lamborghini seems very difficult to drive on the start. Yeah, Lamborghini doesn't look to be up to pace. John Pinder, another rookie, uh, P16 under pressure from Christian Dauer is all over yeah. and tries to go up the inside. He didn't quite make it there, uh, Christian, but John Pinder looks to be struggling with the Lamborghini and go, almost goes on the track. And um, Christian Dauer will surely have easy life now and yeah, goes yeah, ahead. See somebody locking up ahead of him. Oh, not giving up. Pinner's not giving up. Let's see if he can attack back. Lamborghini wanting to use more track compared to the Corvette, which is able to keep a tidier line through the technical part of the track. Chris Middleton, meanwhile, putting pressure on Thomas also with an all 4 GT battle. What a beautiful field this is. Oh, and look at that. Also moves to the right to cover from uh, Milton as we switch towards Bart Erickson harassing uh, Nick yeah. Newcomb who looks to be on the back foot Lamborghini Murcielago is struggling in these conditions and Bart uh, Erickson is testing the Newcomb's right defenses testing Newcomb's defenses side by side side by side Bart Erickson yeah, not this. quite able to do it yeah, this is GT the racing the guys good, the good driving from Nick Newcomb and he's now under pressure from Didier Coelho. Didier Coelho looks to be a renewed driver today, fighting with the former S397 Endurance Championship uh, leading driver, being Bart Ericsson. Roberto Balli, meanwhile, sitting tidy behind them, watching and waiting for a mistake. Now, Bad Boys is Racing is one of the most successful teams in the Sim Racing Online universe, so Bart Ericsson will want to keep that alive and he's surely showing his intentions here as he takes the inside of Nick Newcomb is surely going to have a good uh, effort there in the right hander Nick yeah, Newcomb will locks up, up. I think, I think he did Ericsson got it. Yeah, uh, yeah Bart Ericsson gets the job done although the Lamborghini looks to one looks to yeah. be uh, Four GT's not giving up yet the 4GT looks very tough on the, on the most driving section of the truck uh, but the other Lamborghini seems faster on the top speed. We saw that how for Newcomb was easy to find on the straight line. 
but on the corner track, on the corner section, the most difficult section, technical part from Borghini seems pretty not Didier and look at the inside right there. Right. Big Newcom absolutely trusting DDA to back it, to back off from the move, because that would have been the mother and father of all shunts yeah. with Nick Newcom uh, shutting the door in the face of DDA Coelho. And Nick Newcom will want to keep an eye out because he's being aroused by more than one car. I mean, take a look at this. Uh, it's not. This is not quite the place for Nick Newcomb, because he's usually fights in the top three. But now he's found himself in a bit of an issue. Not sure what he's uh, suffering with, but it looks like he's given the opportunity to Didier Coelho to attack that Lamborghini. It seems like the 4GT is the car to go for, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And Lamborghini, oh, and Lamborghini is struggling to slow down. I think they have tremendous top speed, but this is gonna be very. Very costly indeed in the technical part, as we know that Bernal uh, is a track where you want to privilege uh, downforce and uh, all the reactive aspects and of look, the car. Look, look, I'm seems not to be able to close on the apex to get to stick to yeah. the apex. It's really something why yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot. But from what we know in the real life, the as we got a yellow in sector one. Yeah, from what we know in the real life. Uh, the Lamborghini RG, the Murcielago RG, it was, uh, was a very heavy car and difficult to drive, so probably this is the same. It seems to be more heavier than the 4GT. Look at this, look how wide Yeah, he's missing the apex, turning. something a massive understeer there. Uh, now, as, as we, we now switch to Lewis Middleton, and what I believe to be Hook, probably, I'm not sure. Yeah, it was the Corvette. Yeah, then Hook, yeah, no. the rookie with the Mad Rock Corvette making up places, but Lewis Milton will want to have to say something about that. But you gotta give it to Dan the Van for that save, though. Absolutely. They were off the track completely, as look at uh, what I believe to be Paul Upham right there behind them in the Aston Martin, waiting for his chance. Now, Dan Hook is a rookie, but look at the way. He's able to battle with Lewis Middleton, which is a very experienced driver indeed. As Christian Dogs also trying to, it looks like all the Lamborghinis are suffering quite a bit. Now it seems like the 4GT is the car that's more stabilized, but the Corvette comes, I think, in the second place. But the Mercedes-Lago is, is Delgar, it looks like yeah, it's a car really hard to handle. Wow, uh, what a nice move! Nice move by Dalgar, by yeah, the way. Around the really outside. Nice yeah. move. Yeah. Oh, and Ooh, the Lamborghini wow. spinning! Big mistake by Pinder. That's uh, gonna be costly. And yellow flag as a consequence in Sector 3 as Johnny Gutierrez overtakes Tony Salvici for the league and we are what missing happened? the battle. We are missing the battle at the front. Tony Salvici made a mistake because he disappeared. He's nowhere to be found behind Johnny Gutierrez. Not Maybe sure what the deal Tavizia. was there. Big problem for Salvici. Salvice with a big mistake. Let's see what happened. Oh, this time Johnny Gutierrez, look at that. The 4GT instantly slowed yeah, down. Like oh, he had some issues. Not sure what was that all about. Johnny Gutierrez will be happy about that because he's now leading the race. And rightfully so. The 4GT having some technical issues at Brno, so drama in the first five minutes of the race. Yeah, I mean, this is a happy news for Johnny yeah, Gutierrez, but let's not forget that Tony Talviti was about four seconds ahead, so he definitely got the pace to catch up back again to Johnny Gutierrez. Yeah, that's that heartbreak for Dan Hook, the Mad Croc Corvette we saw earlier battling with Lewis Milton, unfortunately, has retired. Not sure what the issue was with Dan, but uh, he's his first casual Casualty of the uh, this is a bad, the bad, bad Grand because he was doing a very good race for his team. So, hope to see him again. Now, PD Guest is close. Come on, Tony Talvici, swarming him. Same car. Yeah. Looks like we got we have three, four GTs right here, ladies and gentlemen. But looks like Tony Vidi Guest is Tony Talvici is still, still slowing down. So, something is up with Tony Talvici. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, but he's slowing down, he's under pressure from Phil Brown already. Yeah, yeah not even defending. Look, 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 he's not even defending. Big problem. He 
big problems for Tony Telvice, so a heartbreak for the standings leader. He's now P4 and Bart Erickson will be hounding him right here. Did he increase his pain problem? Tony Telvice is slowing down again. Yeah, this Incredible is, uh, stuff. Uh, looks like he went on to the oh, rest. seems like he'll retire. Yeah, probably he is. Until Vichy not being problem. able to respond right now. 4GT looks to be stopping. Not sure what the issue is. Until Vichy dropping lots of places. It's now P12. He is still rolling, but I'm not sure what's going on. Looks like he's back at it again. Back at it again. So maybe a gear selection problems. Uh, I, I would love to know what was going on right there after the race. Not having some problems with his steering wheel. Because now he seems to be back on the on the pace. Yeah, but he lost yeah, a lot of position uh, though. He dropped He's now P15. He's gonna be. He's got to. He's got some overtaking to do. Yeah, and let's. He must hope that this whatever happened doesn't happen again. As we head back to my Volick in the Aston Martin. Chasing that blue Corvette right ahead of him as you see that, which is Rob Milliken. Looks like whenever what he gets up up to him, here. he start losing up that pace, so it's quite a, it's gonna be quite a challenge for him. Off this position, even Bali. Oh, and look at that! Rob Milliken loses it in the middle of the track, and Mike Volick not being able to take evasive action. Not sure what the problem was with this Rob Milliken. I'm pretty sure he locked up the rear tires. Big damage on the Corvette. You can see him weaving. So probably some steering damage or suspension, probably, uh, as Paul Upham now hounds Robert in the blue Corvette. And uh, yeah, let's see what happened. Well, I think they touched, Lorenzo. Oh, no, they didn't. <laughs> no, 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 he lost it in the way. Oh, but they touch the after. Corner. There you go. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my relic. Really big they, contact. I think they both collected damage. Who was that guy? Oh, he was Mike. Wow. Nothing he could have done there. I mean, Rob Milliken stopped the car, but Mike was coming up, and it's kind of almost of a blind corner, so he couldn't see where he yeah, was. And it, and yeah, and Rob was actually able to get it out of the gravel, so lucky as well. Yeah, and problem is these cars are very sensitive on the steering. So if you try on to move a little during the high speed corner, you probably would have beat yourself too. So now. Let's remind you that there is a pit window between 25 and 35 minutes in the race. Is that correct, Lorenzo? Absolutely correct. Yeah, and Rob Milley cannot be able to uh, keep right, it on yeah. the track. He now loses it completely. He's able to save it, though. And he sure, there's some suspension minutes. damage. You, st you still have to wait 10 minutes to do that. I think you can pit for damage. Uh, oh, if you can. That's you, it. Can, you can pit for damage, but yeah, the pit window classically opens and look in about 15 is. minutes. Back on the on his pace. Yeah, I mean, Tavice already up to E15 and pounding Christian Dauger in P14 as Rob Milliken uh, lets him pass. Of course, uh, Tony, uh, Tony Tavice with a faster car right now as Rob Milliken collected this damage. Is, this is, by the way, strange because Tavice has much more pace than Dauger. So strange to not see him still having quite an overtake and Dauger defending very aggressively. I mean, good defense right there by Christian yeah, Dogger. I mean, Tony Talvin looks oh, like he's getting the inside right there. Yeah, he had a great exit from the last corner and the and top speed easy. of the Corvette. Who's using oh, yeah, is he going to come back at it, though? Ooh, not quite. Nicely done by Tony Talvici as he moves yeah. up to Rob Milliken, Rob Milliken pits for the damage. He's in the pit lane. Yeah, it's a, right. yeah this it's is going to be quite a long uh, pit. Yeah, probably it's gonna be. It was an inevitable, so it's be it's it's either that or you retire by the race and the Silva. Now this is a car we haven't seen yet, a Maserati no. MC12, a legend of a car. Yeah, absolutely and legendary car. Last using based the, on the uh, Ferrari Enzo uh, chassis. Uh, with some face lifting and some tricks to the engine. Now Gilles da Silva was, start, was starting in P22, so good, uh, good uh, progress from him. Yeah, I have probably using the problems of the others, staying out of the problems and try to keep the car in the truck. Step to a lot, to be honest. John Vidigas now six seconds uh, behind Johnny Gutierrez. Johnny Gutierrez proving that the Corvette is a great car if you uh, handle it a certain way. Um, 
so I'm I'm amazed we we haven't got a full GT leading, but I I'm pretty sure Tony Talvice will want to say something about that because it's now P13 already in the space of two laps after the big problems that he had um, yeah. earlier on. I mean, guys, take a look at this. We got the Corvette leading, but three, four GTs right behind it. We got John, Phil, and Barrett all, and DDA as well, and Robert yeah, that's actually. That's four. four cars right yeah. there. Wow. I think so. Robert seems on the hunt of John Lee to guess. As uh, John really guessed. And problems different. with Gutierrez too, because Billy Guess is closing his gap. Yeah, but uh, uh, it's on the, on now. the edge. It's on the edge, I would say. It was 4.9 at the beginning of the lap. He went up to 5.2 in the first sector, so maybe the Corvette is faster on the straight line. Um, compared to the 4GT, which looks to be incredibly fast in the technical parts of the track. And, uh, I mean, uh, Johnny Gutierrez is having his, uh, one of his days, not trying to... Oh, and look at that! Sorry to interrupt you, Mas, but Thomas also he was running in the top 13, I would say. He's now collected big damage at the front of his 4GT. Not sure what the deal was uh, with him. Maybe a touch with uh, Dan Hook. Who retired could have been the reason. He was struggling to keep it on the track. Sorry to interrupt you, but it seems like Phil Brown is matching Gutierrez's pace right now. Because last lap of Gutierrez was 51.2, and last lap from Phil Brown was 51.3, and Vidi Gas is lapping around 51.7. Uh, now, see, it happened way, way earlier, and there's no way you can find it. Yeah, I was trying to go back in uh, the way back, way back machine, but it seems like uh, it happened way earlier. As oh, and he, look at that as yeah, we speak. He goes up once again. I think it's a pity. And it hits for damage, that's uh, the most I think Lorenzo, uh, logical he knew I was, thing uh, to do. You know, I was looking for something, so he just gave me something right there. Joe Pinder, meanwhile, in the Lamborghini, is struggling to. Uh, Gain time on the Aston Martin is now P18, almost 90 seconds um, behind Johnny Gutierrez, so almost a full lap distance um, behind the leaders. Uh, John Vidigas losing time as we speak. John Gutierrez is now six and a half seconds clear um, from the 4GT. Yep. Um, I'm surprised. I'm surprised 4GTs aren't fighting that much. So maybe. The drivers that do have a different approach on the setup, although the 4GT looks to be great on average as Phil Brown looks to the inside. Yeah, Don Vidi is probably managing his tires and fuel. I yeah, that's I'm not sure he's full pace right now. Phil Brown surely is going to put pressure on him in the next few laps as we are five yeah. minutes away from the pit window opening. Hey, hey guys, uh, we have to see say that. Uh, right now, the fastest car on the truck seems to be Barrett Erickson, and Talvik is getting up to P10. After one lap, he made up three places. What a game back. And Michael Lavelle pitting from P18. No, it seems so, like early a... pit stops uh, from these drivers. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's due to damage uh, from contacts and uh, spins. Uh, Nick Newcomb in P7, what a what a great drive from him in the Lamborghini, which is struggling to keep up the pace of the Ford. Um, not sure why uh, the Ford GT has this much difference and advantage as unfortunately Michael Labelle. Oh, and Milton almost. Same, what a big save, big save. Michael, Michael Labelle DNF the second DNF of the race, not sure what the deal was, it was in the pit lane, so maybe a connection issues of some sort. Um, meanwhile, Johnny Gutierrez almost one second per lap faster than John Vidigast. Yes, yeah, Phil Brown that lead. needs to do something about that. He's definitely trying to extend that lead, he's running in his beautiful Corvette, I think it's a custom delivery, he's looking, he's looking quite good. Yeah, today. it is, it is. This is a custom livery. Yeah, sure. looking tidy as well. Johnny Gutierrez does not look like he's pushing at all. Yeah, as he's now approaching his teammate, Rob Milliken, which is unfortunately uh, a P18 after the damage that he collected uh, with the incident between him and Mike Bolick earlier in the race. 
Yeah, I wish I could see across the veil in one of these orbits, I'll be honest. No, hey, it would be some would be something interesting to see, but Johnny Gutierrez aiming to uh, represent the USA, apparently, uh, which is, of course, his nationality. Yellow sack, yellow in section 2, as we speak, Mike Volley probably having a spin because he's losing out time uh, in the charts. He was overtaken by Ed Jones and Christian Dauer. Ed Jones, what a great race from him. He was starting from P19 on the grid, and look at that damage. On Mike Wolick's car, probably a big contact into the tire barrier, or even the Armco as Tom also, as well with front damage. Uh, he he collected damage earlier, but not sure what happened to Mike here. There we go. Yeah, it's spin. The Aston Martin spun out of the uh, left hander there. Oh, yeah, just couldn't stop it. It looks like a, Man, a small big damage. damage, but the pump bump yeah, but yeah. that's a front splitter. Uh, yes, uh, to be it away. <laughs> Isn't this not gonna be that anymore? I guess. You know, the mistake you do on these cars without traction control. You, you went too early probably on the on the throttle, and the car didn't have enough grip to keep it to keep him straight. So, bad mistake. Bad mistake. Now Phil Brown is still for the fight for the P2 right now, trying to chase. VD guess, but VD guess seems like his space is dropping, not dropping a little bit, but he just doesn't want to give it up, does he? And Phil Brown is using a lot of, of time right now. Because VD guess is slowing down, and Barry Erickson is coming back. It's gonna be a freeway fight, probably in a few laps, if Phil Brown can make it fast. Phil Brown certainly, certainly looks to be faster than John B. Guess, although John B. Guess is measuring up all these lines to make sure Phil Brown doesn't get an opening on him. But let's um, not, let's don't get him mistaken though, Lorenzo, because Phil Guess started P6, he's running P2 right now, that is quite amazing actually. Yeah, that's an amazing, he had a great start, he went from P6 on the grid to P3 in a space of two corners, and he was able to uh, basically gain time from Tony Calvicio's trouble. Uh, I'm not sure if it was gearbox issues or in engine issues, but Tony Salvicia dropped from P1 to P15 effectively and is now making his way up to Lewis Milton in P9. He's definitely making his way downtown. He's trying to pass the same livery corvette run by Lewis Middleton. I don't think they're teammates, are they? Uh, they're not. Uh, Lewis Milton actually doesn't run in a team, from what I heard. Um, so, Train Salvation not being the teammate of Lewis Milton, and, and Lewis Milton making it hard for Tony to uh, pass yeah. in the first right hander. This, this is what I've been to telling you during the, the qualify. Uh, truck isn't the best truck to overtake because you don't have that much hard breakings. You have more uh, like corners, white corners, so it's very, very difficult to overtake on this track. And Talvici is even as the demonstration of that. He's clearly faster than Middleton, but it's very hard to find a way through. As Dogger gets into the pit to serve his pit, Tony Talvici is still trying to hunt Lewis Middleton to get up into the P10, P9, sorry, as he's already in P10, he's already made up five places, but still a long way to go. Yeah, probably the best... The window opening shortly, so I'm confident that most of the guys will be evaluating their strategies closely now. Pit window open right now as we speak. Uh, Chris yeah, and Dan were pitted earlier than the pit window opening. I'm not sure why, probably damage, but um, Steven Wenham in Ooh, the uh, spotlight. Risking it, risking it. Oh, and Nuko, Joe Pino. Oh, oh, look at that. That's, that was close. That's, that's quite some damage, and John with the gas pitting instantly as we speak. Ooh, well, there you go. That's Joe uh, Pinder DNF. That's uh, probably from damage from what yeah. looks to be a heavy crash. And if Dogger seems to have a problem, he Christian Dogger pitted, yeah, he, he collected damage as well because he pitted right before the pit window opening. Yeah, but um, the, play, the position he was in it was very dangerous because driver couldn't see what was there, so, but they turn and then they see a car stop in the middle, so they don't know what to do. That was very scary. Mass in the pit lane, Milton and Talvice both into the pit lane. 
Tavice will want to have a shorter pit stop to jump Lewis, pretty sure. Now, Lorenzo, it looks like the drivers are actually changing the tires, which is something I didn't expect. Yeah, Brno is a high wear racetrack with all the technical corners. Tony Tavice, what a great stop from him. Let's see, Lewis Milton can respond. That was, that was very he easy. He can. It Lewis Milton retains, retains the position. Actually, he made up quite a, some seconds, actually, on him, so... And Tavice lost the position to Volik. I think Volik yeah, has to Which is, which is to, to eat. Yeah, yeah. Mike Volik with a damaged car as well, so pretty sure Tony is gonna dispatch him pretty fast. But the presence of Volik in front of Tavice can give Middleton some room to breathe, you know? Yeah, but if we look at the chart, we see that Mike Volik hasn't been really yet, and he collected some Yeah, yeah, that's so. exactly, but he, he maybe can slow down a bit, Talvice? No, I think he can, because Talvice is no. going for it. Oh. That was tight, that was tight. That was not the easiest overtake from Tony's career, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but he placed his car really well and uh, made the car stick yeah, yeah. in the corner, which uh, gave him more eventually. Quite a nice and, big and, vi and big for play by, by Volik, who didn't close Mark that Mark Mark Wilson, guys, in the pit lane from P3. As he stops, probably he's gonna change his tires. And yes, we see Bal, uh, car. Oh, sorry, Coelho, Coelho in the pits as well. Yeah, looks as like uh, also Steven Wenham. Yeah, Wenham maybe, in the pit maybe, maybe, well. maybe Ericsson's trying uh, an undercut on Brown because he was probably. faster. He was faster, so he's maybe trying an undercut. Let's see. Yeah, but Tony Talbiti and, and Lewis Middleton it. looks like the battle is not over yet as Tony Talbiti uh, back yeah, at it again takes, I think he took the inside right here side by side as they go up the hill I think he's gonna get the move yes he does yeah, that, is he gonna go wide maybe Lewis Middleton will peek at it again no I think it's the move though good driving from Tony Talbiti now on the front straightaway Ed Jones into the pit lane from P9 Tony Talbiti inherits the top 9 as we speak Talvich's car is. Uh, oh, this was uh, not the best behavior by Wenam. Yeah, Wenam uh, making some is, uh, dangerous he, maneuvers on the track yeah, while Tony was lapping him. Yeah, so, not sure what the deal was there, but Johnny Gutierrez still leading. Uh, only six minutes left in the pit window. Uh, Phil Brown in P. To Roberto Valli, strangely enough, in P3, Nick yeah, Lucom, I... the only surviving Lamborghini, as the leader's leader uh, is in the pit lane. Yeah, Johnny looks Gutierrez like he, uh, pitting. he almost got a could have got a drive through because he had to lock his tires to stop that car. So hopefully that didn't uh, get him anything. But I'm sure he's gonna retain his lead as he exit because uh, John Biggast is now P6 and he's fighting. Bill Brown in second yeah, place. Yellow, 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 I mean, thank God for those big ceramic brakes, otherwise this one could have been a, a disaster. Yeah. Did he guess with the undercut, how much did he gain on Phil Brown and Barrett Erickson? He gained a lot with the undercut by being the first to stop. So the undercut is very powerful on these cars. Yeah, it seems like the undercut is definitely doing his job, as we see John Vitti guest trying to get a pass on Mark. Ooh, that he locks a bit. Mark Heifery, I think he's yet to pit as well. Yeah, but yeah. it's still a battle for the position. Mark has pitted. Yeah, he's and it is making the game of Phil Brown and Pertalicon because they can join back if Pity Guess is not able to overtake a high tree soon enough. Yeah, but it's still quite a battle for the position, so he doesn't have to concede here uh, as Bear X is also within a second of Phil Brown trying to snatch that P5 from him. They both run the full GT. I think that Maserati is, uh, is being blue flag. Yeah, he is on blue flags. He's making way now. These guys, oh, and almost compromises Baron Ericsson. 
Because he's coming by the sailboat, by the way. Yeah, he coughs up some time right there as we see John BD gets to keep losing it. Frogging is struggling to get Mark High 3 past. Now, this is going to play into the ends of Johnny Gutierrez. Ooh, I think he, did, uh, he passed him right with Tony Talvitz. He made his, most of his moves. I think that's the corner that where most people are getting their passes. Leader in the pits, so Johnny Gutierrez gets back at the front. Which gives P2 to VD Guest as well as Mark. But uh, from the look of it, Mark hasn't hit it yet. Uh, did he miss his pit window, Lorenzo? Right? I don't think so because it's uh, still three minutes left. He's gonna, he's gonna have to pit either this lap or the next one. Otherwise, it will risk a DQ from the race. As we get yellow flag in sector three. Now two cars behind BD Guest, Mark and Phil Brown, all running within a second. But it's, I think John BD Guest has a better pace to stay ahead of Mark. Yeah. But not sure about and Mark, Mark and Mark Phil as well. Steelers. I still to beat so and uh, yeah we march is struggling in with the car on the truck. That said I think Phil Brown should get the move done, but I think it's easier said than done in this track. It seems like that uphill corner is where people, most people get their passes, but there's just not enough straight road for you oh, to get How much high tree is breaking very hard, it's locking up very much. This is this is not helping if you have Use tires, this is not helping. Yeah, and oh, I think he really giving it up. Makes it up. way for Phil Brown because Phil Brown is battling with John BDS effectively, uh, whereas uh, Mark I3 is gonna have to pit this lap. Jackson seems not able to keep pace yet before because he lost very much by Phil Brown and BDS. Erickson is also chasing Mark, who hasn't pitted yet, and it seems like Let's every see. time he gets close, he just can't get the job done. And Mark Nitro is still staying out, and if he doesn't take the stop in this, I don't know if he can make it. No, he's not going to make it. That's going to be a penalty for Mark Nitro, very likely. Um, pit window is closing in one and one minute and twenty nine seconds, so. That's shorter than a lot of Renault with these cars. So, uh, Mark High 3 effectively breaching uh, the pit window rule. Pretty sure the stewards will have a look at that. Uh, John Gutierrez, 10 seconds clear from yeah. John BDS. Uh, if you guys told me that Johnny Gutierrez would have been the front of this race, I wouldn't have believed you because in Silverstone the Corvette was nowhere. Um, but look at this. Yeah, but Lorenzo, you gotta keep in mind that Tony Talviti had quite an issue with his cars, which eventually led him to drop all the way. So I think Tony Gutierrez was the right man at the right time and eventually got him that lead. Yeah, true. Tony Talviti had a big issue. Not sure what happened on his 4 GT, but he is low down for almost half a lap and uh, dropped yeah. all the way to P15. So um, it seemed Tony like. Man, man, from he, he made the most. He made the most of uh, his opportunities, and uh, John with the gas as well with that great start. Uh, Phil Brown in a quiet P3 uh, as Bart Erickson gets by Mark High Three. Mark High Three not being able to eat. Uh, this is a this is a bad mistake because it's like. He didn't like read some rules, or else he maybe was too concentrated, too focused on the on the defending the position than to respect the rules. And I don't he know. Now he's uh, 16 seconds late um, compared to the pit window. Nick Newcomb inherits P6 as a result. Keeping an eye on Tony Talviti because uh, he's definitely a, a guy to keep an eye for on this race because he's made up quite a places from P15 now running P8. He's, uh, he's hunting Roberto Bali. He's barely one second from I'm Roberto Bali. The gap again on the guest. Seems like we are going to see a big fight for the podium. The 
second and third place. Yeah, Phil Brown right behind John Pity Guess. So, uh, four GTs, pretty equal, I would say. Yeah, oh, look on the braking. Having a peak up the inside, not close enough to worry John Pity Guess, who is looking very tidy indeed. Four GT working beautifully here in Brno. And now Vicky is on the back of Bali. Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna be great news for Tony Talbot if he can get up to the top five, which I believe is very much doable as we about to cross the 23 minute mark in this race. Now, Phil Brown is also chasing a pretty guess right now, running half a second behind him. He still has a lot of time to make a move. Yeah, and this fight is only gonna help Harrison aim back and make a three way the end probably let's see if Ericsson can have the pace but I don't see him never even close he was closer before I don't see him on the back we now see Ed Jones yeah, this is the battle for P10 he had quite an issues in the mid to early stages of the race but I think he recovered quite nicely now, outside the top 10, which I think is the uh, the points are distributed from the P1 to P10, is that correct? That's correct, and that's the battle for P10, so one point up for grabs here between Ed Jones and Lewis Middleton. Um, great, great battle between the 4GTs. 4GT really being the MVP today, as the only Lamborghini surviving is Nick Newcomb in uh, P6, and of course we have Johnny Gutierrez in the Corvette leading the race. I mean, if there was a manufacturer championship as well, the Ford GT would be dominated right now. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. definitely. Phil Brown still on a mission to get past Vidi Guest, but just can't get it right. The, the thing I admire the most from this battle is John Vidi Guest is not changing his line. He's keeping the racing line as Phil Brown is not there behind him, so no cracking under pressure from John Vidi Guest. Phil Brown is going to have to invent the overtake and I think uh, Tony if he Tom wants to get past. Sorry to cut you off there, Lorenzo, but Tony now is up P7. Tony being able to uh, make the place at uh, Roberto's expenses there, and uh, look at the gap that he's already building. Yeah, but uh, he's got a, a car ahead of him known as Nick. Not a guy to get past to get passed by easily, so he's got to make up nine seconds and get past him, and possibly if the Aguilo, because uh, Nick is only about a second behind, so this is quite possible to be in the top five. Absolutely, it looks uh, it looks to be promising indeed. Um, I wonder if Phil Brown. I wonder what Phil Brown is gonna try and invent on John Vidi Gas, because that's the battle I've been wanting to see. For a very long time, John VDS is usually the attacker, um, and it's not it's not so common that he gets under pressure. Between the driving by our two guys, Phil Brown seems to have a uh, tighter line on some corners, which gives him more speed into the corner. But probably uh, VDS with this try with, with this line is having a better exit, so. Look at this. Look at the difference between the two. This is yeah. fun to watch. John this Vidigas is fun to watch. Privileging the uh, traction from corners. Look at the poor option getting under the grass not to be on the way. Now, if you take a yeah. closer look, you will see that yeah. the As we speak, sorry to cut you off, Nas, but Tony Calvice has overtaken Nick Newcomb. Probably a mistake yeah, on the Lamborghini driver because he lost yeah, quite was. a bit of time. He was nine seconds ahead, and he, he yeah, got passed even by Bali. To Bali as well. And and it seems to be very slow. Yeah, he is very slow. Look at that. Now we'll try to go on the way back machine to see what caused him. Oh, there you go. Oh, uh, there you go. Oh, and that's damage. That's he couldn't damage stop as well. the car. Oh my wall. god, that's a that's weird, a weird failure, maybe break failure on the Lamborghini Murcielago because yeah. that was a that complete lockup. Uh, Ooh, he... and this is gonna be unsafe for John probably. Yeah, he might have rushed it a little bit, but I'm glad nothing happened. 
but Roberto still made up that place as we will see right here. Newcomb making way and rightfully so to Roberto because he rejoined the track in a very unsafe manner and costing Roberto a few seconds. Uh, good on good on Nick. And he's now pitting, so big problems for the Murcielago today. Uh, both yeah. him and uh, Joe Pinder had big contacts uh, with the tire yeah. barrier as we get a yellow in sector one. And that John's trying to get the points on Middleton. Yeah, it's fighting for, uh, for the points, guys. Not giving up, and they're gonna inherit the uh, Nick Newcomb's place. So both into the points right now. Yes, definitely. This is gonna now become the battle for P9, effectively. Yeah, this has been an ongoing battle for a while. It looks like uh, Nick Ed is trying to. He's, he's actually in the point right now since uh, Nick Newcomb is in the middle of fixing damage. So let's see if he's gonna get a little bit greedy and still want to get more to climb up to that P9. Well, uh, if you're a driver, your instinct tells you to, to attack the guy in front and not to be uh, to stay to stay back. You know, uh, I think it's the basic instinct of a driver to want to get the much the best place he can. So I think it, we are gonna see an attack uh, sooner or later and. Ericsson seems to be not on the pace anymore of these two guys. Phil Brown is and dropping out a little bit right now as the uh, yeah, is still in the pits spending over a minute now, a minute 14 seconds. Yeah, probably he's making his tires breathe a bit. He's pulling his tires away from DD Gas and Kater is dominating the race. As we Go back to the leader of the race, John Gutierrez, in his sick livery, representing the United States of America. Yeah. Leading the race now by 11 seconds from VD Guest, who himself finally got to relax a little bit from the attack that has been presented to him by Phil Brown. Didn't want to didn't be conservative on his tires. I think that might have cost him a little bit because it seems like now. VD guess it might have been a bit easy on his tires so he can finally get some grip at the last stages of the race. Not yeah, sure I don't on. know. Maybe maybe Phil Brown's doing the same. Maybe he backed up a little to make his tires and his car rest a, uh, a bit and then try and attack it. On the last laps, I don't know. This is, by the way, what, what I was telling you. This, this truck is very, really difficult to... By uh, a way to overtake, and we are seeing it pretty much. Seems like the only the only corner when you can make a move is the uphill game, the last uphill game. As Tony Talviti right now, seven seconds close to the Aguello. He's got about a quarter of an hour, fifteen minutes to get the job done and climb to that top five to possibly have a chance in the championship but Gutierrez right now isn't gonna isn't gonna slow down anytime soon as he's about 12.6 seconds ahead of John BDS so definitely is far away from a win but any position for Tony Talviti will do just fine right now as he's about to lap a lap Yeah, that's Paul Abham in 15th place. Yeah. Big third play by Apem. I mean, how lucky Calvitia had been in the first two races. Because the first race, he had to struggle to team back, even if he won, because of a penalty. Uh, at the first stage of the race and then in this race he was clearly the fastest guy and he had some problems I hope not with the with his wheel uh, but yeah a, a difficult race for him and Bear Erickson running through right now a great race for Bear Erickson about two seconds behind Phil Brown which I think Phil Brown can sort most of his tires which might open a chance for Bear Erickson 
he still got more good time, much more time for him yeah. to make a move. But right now he's running a beautiful race in a P4. Quite a race for better accident is being followed by Didier yeah. Coelho, which I can say the same thing for Didier Coelho. Yeah, definitely. And we know that Ericsson is one of the best guys on the grid on managing tires and be uh, and be able to attack in the last part of the race. So probably this 15 minutes are going to be Ericsson hunt territory, if you know what I mean. And because he seems really much to be closing the gap between Vidi Guest and Phil Brown, which is really losing by Vidi Guest. Is yeah, Phil Brown has backed up a little bit. Uh, is now 1.6 seconds shy of John Vidigas and Bart Eriksson uh, smelling effectively the third place at Brno. So I'm pretty sure, as Rick rightfully said, that Bart Eriksson is going to try and do something about Phil Brown in the next few laps. Yeah, the RT typically hunting ground for Bart Eriksson. As we move down to the P7, taken by Roberto Valli, who had quite a battle with Tony Talviti, right now running 8 seconds, and that will, should give you uh, an idea, an image on, on how much pace Tony is, uh, has on his backpack right now, as he's now 8 seconds ahead of Robert, and about 6 seconds drop into 5 now, chasing Didier Coelho for that top 5. Like I said, the top 5 was possible, I said that earlier, and I still believe it is. I think we are gonna see Talvice get in P5 at least. But you know, you are now getting to guys which have a uh, similar pace to you, so this is going to be a bit more hard to overtake Coelho. Uh, but I mean, Talvice is really, really the fastest guy on the on the grid right now. Now, Mark Hytri, we believe, did an infringement in terms of pitting at the right time, so I'm not sure when. If and if that was going to be investigated by the admins later, but so far he's in a respectable place of a P8 ahead of Lewis Middleton right yeah. now. So it should be good points yeah. for him for the championship. Yeah, definitely. And by the way, we were talking about Bali before, and another solid race by Bali. Seven plays, uh, close to the, the top guys. Uh, I mean, the ACC champ is not the ACC champions because of luck. <laughs> He he's a solid he's a really solid driver, so good job. Lewis Middleton right now is still being chased by Ed Jones with I, I think it's hindering a little bit that ability to keep up with Mark. He's still twenty three seconds behind, but I mean he, if he get past he's still in the points, but P nine is good points for sure. I believe it's yeah. P it's two points or three points, not exactly sure. I want to, and I want to underline the performance by the Silva, which was starting 22nd and now it's P13. So very, very good race. Probably using much, using very much the problems by the other guys, and staying out of problems, as I, as I was saying, and but. He was able to make up nine places, so very good job. They're passing the MC12 right there. It was he was being lapped, and the fight is still going on between him and uh, We will go back to that, but I gotta highlight that uh, this man right here isn't having a nice day today because he dropped all the way from P4, I believe, when he started. Now to P11 now obviously he had that crash where he couldn't stop as we show you in the replay and he went right straight to the wall I think he fixed the damage and uh, yeah he's about 21 seconds not sure if it's enough in nine minutes to get up into the points so definitely a race to forget for Nick Newcomb but he definitely got the pace to fight with the leaders for sure yeah we saw him having a good pace on Silverstone but probably that was even helped by the car behavior because we saw even Osama being very fast on Silverstone uh, but right now on Brno this car seems to be really really difficult to drive the, the Lamborghini seems not to be the best car for technical trucks and Rob Milken how unlucky he was by that hit 
on the first digits of the race. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Rob Milliken is the teammate of Johnny Gutierrez because it looks like the livery is quite similar, isn't it, Ricardo? Yeah, it seems like that. It's like they made have some differences in the color. Yeah, uh, blue one, red one. I mean, red, very good looking, by the way. But yes, they are the the two teammates. I think Rob Milliken is gonna be happy. Because Gutierrez, with this win, I don't know if he's going to take the leader leading of the championship, lead of the championship. But probably he should be should be able to. And this is the man that Ricardo was talking about, the Silva right now, P13. He's he's been led by many cars, but a solid position to be in nonetheless. I mean, we have four DNF right now, so to be P14 ahead of about three more cars, five more cars, I believe. It's uh, not too bad for Jules De Silva, but I'm sure he would have appreciated to be in the points. So I'm yeah. sure he'll come back strong for the next race. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just the demonstration that being fast is not the only thing that's worth thing into sim racing, you know? Because maybe you can be faster than him, but if you do mistakes, if you have to do three stops more because of the damages or what else, or get a DNF. Uh, you're gonna hand the race behind him because he, he he made up nine places without making mistake without with a drive that permits him to not be done doing mistakes. So really, really good job. And right behind him, Stefan, as we see him locking up right there on his own, not in a battle right now. About 60 seconds, which is a minute behind the silver, so no chance for him to get position anytime soon. A position which we do not wish for Paul Upham because he's only six seconds now ahead of Paul Apham. So definitely gotta look up for that. I mean, it's not, it, it doesn't really matter because you will not get the points unless you're in the top 10. But nonetheless, it is still a race and it's still a fight for position. And as a racer, you always have that eager to get past other opponents ahead of you. Yeah, no, that's what I was talking between the battle between Jones and Middleton. Jones maybe can, you know, accept to be P10 and get points, but if you can get P9, you as a driver has to get P9. You want to get P9, you want to have a bubble, you want to have fun. This is the most important thing. And also, it's still a damaged car, but probably is something is up. I think it's a bug from the mod. Because I don't think that during the pits, he didn't repair his car. And he could have actually collected damage again. Oh yeah, yeah, probably. But seems strange that it's the same damage as before, so... Maybe and I'm wrong. Ooh, but, oh, right as I go Volik, to... Volik, Volik. Uh, Mike Volik Big mistake. loses the car and hits the back first. And ladies and gentlemen, that is oversteer because the back hit first. Yeah. Joke of the day, I guess. But yeah, not the, not the, not a joke for uh, Mike Wallach because he lost his wing. So it's gonna be pretty much undrivable as we see him slide. Ooh, that's the leader right there. Hopefully he doesn't intervene. I think in this his is path. gonna be our tire for Wallach. I hope not. I think he can fix that car and keep going because you're allowed to pit if you have damage. So I hope he knows that information and hit that car right to the pit. But he needs to be careful because he's running without a wing, without a bumper. Anyone would want to be in right Sorry now. to interrupt us, but right now, Herbert Harrison seems to be flying on the truck. It's one second faster than the guy in front. And he's right on the back of Brown. And Brown is on the back of Digging. Did he guess so? The last five minutes are going to be. Uh, That's the race to watch, guys. That's the two, three, four guys all close up together in the space of 30 meters. This seems to be the fastest guy of the pack. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Nobody so else is gonna be able... Is he, gonna, is, he, is he gonna be able to hold on to the second place as we get another yellow flag in Sector 3? Bruno proving to be... Ooh, uh, car right there. Mike Wallach, yeah, Mike Wallach yeah, yeah. again. I really hope he does it. DNF finishing a race is always uh, something. Always, every race you say you have to finish a race. Always finish it. Yeah, unless you're kind of something 
damage, which I hope not. As now we watch the battle for the P2 seems, right seems, here. Seem, seems like uh, a deja vu from the, the first stint, you know, when they are at the end of the stint, these three guys were closing up to each other, and this is, seems like really in, again the first stint. Yeah, and what we what was what what were we telling you guys that Ericsson was the, the was the one to watch by the end of the race so two laps probably maybe three I don't know where Gutierrez is but these are going to be three probably three laps. laps yeah but it seems to be like Barry Ericsson has awakened his ultra instinct and finally oh, decided Phil Brown going going for it on John Vidigast yeah I don't think that's a place to make a move but definitely should no, go for it from Bart Erickson. Oh, oh, oh Vidigast is Really struggling to keep the apex. He, he seems to have a big understeer. Let's go on board with John Vidigas as Phil Brown uh, hounding him, but also oh being hounded God. by Barry Erickson. This is gonna be the great, great fight of the race. So you tell me, Lorenzo, Vidigas might watch out for two cars, but Phil Brown was also has also to watch out for Barry yeah, Erickson. Guys. And Bear X has to wash off two cars. This is quite a battle to watch, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's probably two laps. This is going to be the last two laps. Just two minutes forty. I don't think that the third can make three laps. I look at Brown how how fast he is. This is absolutely the moment for Brown. elbows out, and I think this is actually knees out for Bear X. I, I reckon I, I reckon Phil Brown should should wait for a better chance than trying in the last corner. The last corner does not look to be suitable no. for him to pass John Vidigas, so... Yeah. I wonder how he's going to... Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. Phil Brown trying his best now as uh, John Vidigas needs to keep his cool and he's doing that, absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, There's going to be one lap after this one. So yeah, and Vidigas Vidi is looking like to find the Ooh, good line looking to get... Right there. Yeah. To you, but I thought he was going to go no, 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 no problem, no problem. I, I, I was saying Vidigas is using the best lines to get the, the traction out of the exit. But look at how much he, he, he wipes the, the, the inside of the corner. Absolutely, and I think that they're all running oh. different lines, but I actually agree with Lorenzo, with Phil Brown, because he's not picking a good place for him to be, to pass. Yeah, uh, if I, I was, I, if you're about to action, you have to do your move now, otherwise you're, you're probably gonna be too late the next lap. Ooh, almost collected Phil Brown right there, great control by Barrett Erickson. But still a battle, this you is... You want to do the move now, you want to, to be on the move now. This might be the last lap, depending on where is John, with Johnny Gutierrez oh, right it's now. Gonna be a, it's going to be the it's last lap. It's going to be another lap. One there more we go. Lap. We already crossed the line, so one more lap. So this is and the last chance for Bad Erickson and Phil Brown to possibly make a move. And yeah, Vidi Vidi it's Vidi over nothing. And Vidigas built himself some gap. So now, I think he's pretty on the safe side of this battle. But it looks like Phil Brown dropped back in the middle of the race to possibly keep those tires alive and fresh for these uh, part of the race, but it still yeah. doesn't work for him because now he's being haunted by Barry Erickson. Yeah, and Barry, and Barry Erickson, look, I was, I was, he's struggling to get that position, but he, again, you don't have much corner to do uh, a big attack. Uh, and these cars are very difficult on the brakes. So risk to whoa! Look at that it's risk close, to push it's up. I think this is going to be the. He's has to yeah, go for it. Is, gonna... is he going to go for it? Absolutely not. I think. Oh, and Phil Brown drifting into the corner. I don't think. I think he actually driving. broke what as a, late as he could to keep that place ahead, which is great. What a big defense by Phil Brown! What a control there! Oh my God! I thought they were going to crash right there. But some possibility are getting lesser and lesser every. Now I think, I don't know if they passed the, the, the uphill corner, I think they're about to pass it. This is the chance for Bear Erickson. He has to make something right here. He's closing. I think Phil He's Brown is going to try to the side, but Phil Brown breaks he, as late as he possibly can. Oh, I did a little. 
That was a touch. That was a uh, high up here. <laughs> Watch out for me, Phil Brown. And Jackson has to sit really close now. Yeah, uh, I think Brown like maybe maybe Phil Brown was able to defend. Your flag is out, John Johnny Gutierrez, the winner so Johnny, of what? today's race. Let's see how uh, oh. the battle that we want to see. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh, and and yeah, I think this is it. This is how it's gonna end. Bear Erickson what gets, gets what? second place. What, Brown. what a result for him. I mean, I what should yeah. be mad about that because Bear Erickson gave it all, all the way from the back yeah, fire for the, for the for the for actually P2 because uh, VD Guest was also there. But uh, shout out to VD Guest for also keeping his cool while being attacked most of the race by Phil Brown. Keeping yeah. it within a second, so yeah, great stuff, uh, great battles, guys. I enjoyed that. What can you show these three guys gave us, gave us today? Really, really nice show. Absolutely. Very, very fun race, very fun race. As we see other cars crossing the finish line. Red Jones in a fight, actually. And Jones trying to get the nine. The nine. Look. Wait, you still, he might, he you, still have a shot? you still have a shot? Let's see. Uh, Middleton defending on the inside. Yeah, it's actually it's still going on. I can't believe it. As uh, Jones. Uh, oh, big mistake made Middleton. I uh, think that Jones Oh, they made collided! Him. Oh my god! They, they have. Come on. Get the, to the first gear. The, oh no, he no, spins. Jones is spun. Lewis Middleton oh, is going to take P9. Oh, Drama <laughs> until the finish line. I did Here not expect that. Racing Online, what a, what a great race this was. Absolutely, race until the last corner, but unfortunately, uh, Ed Jones, as he's trying to squeeze his car in the garage right there, didn't have a chance to... He got back to the gear, but his car spun. I think he was in a rush at the heat of the moment. He just can't control it. As everybody else is crossing the line, uh, what, what a good race, what a really, really good race. As we switch to the results. Johnny Gutierrez leading uh, today is race from start to finish, basically. Uh, P1 for him, John Vidigas in P2. Phil Brown, what a great result for, for Phil in P3. Barry Erickson with a great recovery, uh, finished up in P4. Didier Cuero in P5. Tony Salvice, P6, uh, all the way from P15 after his problems in the early stages. Roberto Valdi, a bit of a quiet race for him, but uh, still a top 7 finish. High 3 in P8, Wilton in P9, Ed Jones in P10, first points for him in this season. And remember guys that only the P10 from only a the top 10 gets points, so after that, you are getting a zero. Yes, and the we have got to do come in uh, P11, the only finishing Murcielago uh, from today. Rob Milliken uh, in P12, Gilles da Silva P13, Paul Abner and Steven Wenham complete the top 15, and Thomas also comes on in P16. Unfortunately, we had four DNFs from crashes. Michael Labelle, Joe Pinder, Christian Darver, and Mike Bullock all retired for car damage. And then, then in the last hope. place, quarter heat up race from the start till the end. That was uh, definitely something. But uh, we will leave you guys with a small ad. Not, not an ad, but a. Uh, yeah, stay tuned.
Well, that was an interesting race and uh, one of the most intense race of the season. Uh, for of course, Silverstone being the first one. Uh, Bruno Masaryk uh, was today's round. Uh, next up, we have Spa Francorchamps, the legendary Belgian uh, circuit, in uh, two weeks' time. So, twenty fourth of July, twenty twenty two. Stay tuned for more. Uh, we will now switch to the interviews. Uh, on today's drivers. We have Nick and John. No, John crashed. Got it. And Nick Newcomb, uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, quite a race today, starting all the way, I believe, from the top five, but a, a crash, a lot of things happened. Can you talk us through it to what was going on? Oh, the car just seemed to be a lot different. Um, I just don't know. What to, like, uh, I missed my break point for the, for the um, lost my front bumper. Um, the pace was there initially, and then uh, it, I got it fixed, and it seemed to be working. And then um, after the tire change, I was chasing down uh, nine and ten after all the the repair, and um, it just didn't seem right. Like still, um, the rear was far too loose. Even though know, I was when I was having to really be conservative, the lap times were still there, but I couldn't really uh, push it into the fifties. Um, like it was before because um, it was a little bit snappy. Uh, if it had been um, a little bit better, I'm sure I would have caught the two guys in front because um, I think I was still a second uh, faster than them. But if the car had been working better than, a, than it was, I would have been at least 1.5 to 2 seconds faster. But that's all in all, you know, um, just one of them things. But at the beginning of the race, I was just swallowed up by the Fords. There was just nothing, nothing you could do. I had um, the pace into the turn. I mean, I might, I held them off a couple of times uh, mid-turn coming out, but once the grunt came in, it just, uh, just sailed past. Well, uh, I want to talk to you and Nick about. I think it was you who locked his front wheels and went straight to the wall. What happened yeah. there? actually mr break point oh <laughs> just yeah. just slightly and that was it yeah you, you actually managed to slow it down just a bit but couldn't stop it before it hits the wall and i think you it cost you a long time in the pit to yeah. fix that car yeah 34 seconds wow uh, tire change yeah but i think uh, this is a race to forget uh nick uh, and we got Spa coming up right ahead. Are you prepared, or I'd say mentally prepared for that, and also trying to aim into snatch because your pace is actually really, really good, and you're looking up to fight with the top leaders for sure. So, what are your expectations on Spa? Uh, test the fort. Oh, we'll see how it, see that well, see that leads us. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, go ahead, Nick. And, and we'll go, we'll go from there. Um, but I think testing the fort, Corvette is the way to go um obviously i wanted to try and stay in the car that i chose to start with but it just seems it's not gonna it's not gonna work because uh, the four just has too much grunt it's uh it's uh, i'm not you know people are saying it's easier to drive i'm not sure because i'm haven't really worked on it i know the lamborghini's uh very twitchy and very temperamental. So I'll see what uh, the Ford gives, and then we'll see what it's all about from there. And uh, hopefully, we'll uh, finish the season with the uh, you know a couple of podiums. That's that's the aim. Um, the win, if if a win comes along, I'll take it. But uh, there's some fast guys in there, so I'll just take a podium again. And that'll be good. Absolutely, we wish nothing but the best for you, Nick, as we hope to see you once again in Spa coming up in two weeks. But uh, yeah. I'm Thank you again, and I'm joined with John Vidi Guest, the man who had to fight Phil Brown for almost the entirety of the race, 
actually yeah. had to had bad X and John in right there too. So it went. It was a three way battle. John Vegas, thank you first of all for giving us uh, that battle to watch. It was quite amazing. Uh, Talk <laughs> us through what was happening. Uh, first of all, uh, I lost three liters of fluid. <laughs> Oh God! I can imagine. I I'll, can imagine. I'll sweat. <laughs> I was lucky. I had my fan going <laughs> on the right <laughs> side of me. <laughs> so, what what happened to, to you, Nick? I didn't hear that. Yeah, I missed the breakpoint slightly, so I, I went off. I got it slowed right down, but um, it just touched touched the um, the ball, the tires, and in the, the bumper dropped off. So there's nothing. Like uh, that. That took you out of the the yeah the it was peace ah. like I, I I made a mistake earlier because there was a slow car on the right hand side yeah. and it uh, it distracted us uh, and I went off at the the, the tight right hander um, uh -huh. uh, dropped two places but I was faster than them two guys so it was just cases trying to stick with them uh, and then that the second mistake dropped us down to P P eleven and uh, the car just wasn't working properly. I had the pace on the two front guys, but there's nothing I could do. But, uh, oh, you next mean... Time, uh, their tenant, mean, like, uh, cars that finished 9th and 10th. I was ah, fucked on there, ah, but there's, okay. there's nothing I could do. Shame, man, because yeah. you're, you're a fast driver. You're good for a top, <laughs> top three podium. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to test the port. Don't worry. <laughs> no, no. Are you going to try the yeah. secret weapon, eh? I'm going to try it. Well, it's not a, it's not a secret now, is it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. No. Nice. Talking yeah, about the... Well the done, John. Yeah, definitely. Talking well, about the cars, uh, if, I can, if I can join a bit. Uh, last time, John, you said to us that, ge that the general sensation was that the Lamborghini was the fastest car on the grid, right? Yes, yes. And... But to me, it looks like the Lamborghini is the fastest on the straight, but the Ford is the easy to drive on the technical parts of the truck. So what you and Nick expect from Paris, which is a, a, a mixture of fast parts and technical parts, so it, it, it's, it should be fun to see how the Lamborghini and the Ford behaves. Well... It's a good thing we did two races already because uh, before this series started, I tested Eau Rouge at Spa with these cars and I tried <laughs> to go flat through the through Eau Rouge and every guy, every time I tried to do that, the car uh, spun out on oversteer. I think uh, Nick will recognize that if he tried it already yeah. the, because the cars are a little bit sensitive for uh, uh, high-speed oversteer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, High speed corners, oversteer in the middle of the corner. It's a bit sensitive for that. So it's, uh, we're, we're not going to be comfortable taking all rouge flat with these cars. We might have to uh, lift the throttle a bit. So, uh, and again, the, the guys who, who nail it going flat, flat through all rouge, those will be the guys with the fast lap, lap times. But the fourth, well, it's a learning curve, isn't it? Because uh, in the first, uh, at the first event, I thought indeed that the Lamborghini would be the fastest car for my uh, testing experience. But as you go along and learn the cars better and better, I found out that the Ford was actually better than the Lamborghini. But you know how it is. Some guys, you give them a, a wheelbarrow and they still go fast with it. So Nick is one of those guys. Yeah. He, can, he makes that Lambo go, go really fast. And then uh, you had the top runner in the first event, the guy that wasn't here today. I forgot his name. He's also very fast in the Lamborghini. So it's all in in whose hands you're giving the car, you know. You were talking about Osama. Yeah. I'm sure if we give uh, the Lamborghini to uh, Johnny Gutierrez or Tony Tolfici, they would be bloody fast in it as well. <laughs> yeah, probably. But for the average skilled people like me, uh, we have to take the four to be fast. <laughs> Now, I wouldn't call that an yeah. average uh, out of what the performance he showed us today, Vidi Guest, holding Phil Brown for the most the entirety of the race. I just want to know, are, were you, like, uh, did you feel that, like, did you feel the pressure that was Phil Brown putting on you the whole race? Or was it just like, oh, no, I got this. I'm going to keep it. I'm consistent. Oh, enough. no. 
No, no, it wasn't easy at all. I was feeling the pressure. That guy, Phil, man, he's so fast, you know. <laughs> and we always seem to get in each other's hairs. We're always sort of around each other in events. He's in front of me or I'm in front of him. We're always uh, uh, swapping positions like that. But he he had me, uh, he had me on the pressure good. So... Uh, when I, when I, uh, in the beginning of the interview, when I said I lost three liters of fluid, that almost wasn't a joke because he had me sweating. <laughs> I, I can quite yeah, imagine. Yeah, Nothing. he gave me a good workout. Yeah, it was difficult. It was really difficult to stay in front of Phil. I had to be so concentrated, and when someone is pushing you, you you try to go a little bit faster than you than you're going to get a little bit more lap time. And every time I tried that, especially on worn tires, I would overshoot the apex a little bit, and he would uh, uh, catch up with me again. And then I thought, okay, let's not do that. Keep stick to the program. Do what you know is right, and don't experiment because that that's where disaster lies. So. I just did the lines that I knew, and I did the entry and the exit speeds I knew, and I stopped experimenting, and that's how I, st I stayed in front of him. But it was a hard, it was a hard job staying in front because he's so fast. Yeah, and Johnny was just in another league. Uh, I tried to keep up with him, but uh, on fresh tires I could keep up with him. But as soon as the tires were getting older and, go and older, Johnny was so much better on the older tires. He's uh, he was so much faster than me on worn tires, so I couldn't keep up with him. So he got a deserved win. Congrats to Johnny. Absolutely, Gutierrez. Unfortunately, we don't have him with us in the interview. Otherwise, we would have uh, asked him what it felt like to be actually dominating the whole race after what unfortunately happened to Tony Talviti, which I really was uh, looking forward to hear from him, hoping he might actually hop in, but unfortunately he didn't because mm. at some stages of the race he started slowing down, losing all the way, went all the way down to P15, and actually made up all places all the way up to p6 or p5 if i'm not mistaken so it was a quite a quite a mission he had on and rightfully fulfilled so yeah quite a race quite a race do you know why tony dropped back i would love to know he had oh. brake problems his brake was locking oh he, okay and he couldn't get it off oh so well, it's a it's a oh. game how, how can his brakes uh, uh, be defected <laughs> uh, just... it's not a real car maybe his pedals. maybe he's... Yeah, yeah maybe. probably some problem. So it wasn't oh, working. Maybe he overheated him. That's possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he might actually tell us something in the forum. So we will uh, bring that on and mention that on in the next uh, live stream for sure. Well, let's extend an invitation to Tony Torvici, Johnny Cucheres, and Phil Brown to join us here in the commentary booth for next time. Absolutely. Uh, it's, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it'll be quite an honor to have. Uh, the winner with Johnny Gutierrez, the winner of today, and Tony yeah. Calviti, the man who made up most of the places today. So it is an open invitation. Thanks for that, John. <laughs> and uh, I can't speak English, it's no excuse. Then uh, use hand gestures, do anything but be here. <laughs> as long as the message is, uh, is uh, sent, that's the, what it's all about. Exactly. Absolutely. So Thank you again, guys, for broadcasting. It's uh, highly appreciated. You guys uh, really make uh, the events come alive, you know, uh, with your uh, excellent uh, broadcasting. So uh, we're really glad everybody who is doing this series is really glad that you are doing this uh, broadcast and uh, on such high quality too. So congrats to you. That's we you, John. It. Appreciate. We appreciate the kind words, John. Um, I'm not sure if you uh, if you saw it, John, but we. Uh... We showed a little intro that we're going to use for all the races uh, in this oh, season. Cool. We'll cool. we'll play it. We'll play for you right now. Okay, that's going to be in front of the video. Yes, it, it is included yes, in the at vibe. The end also. It, we will play it. Right we at played the end. it a few times uh, in the, before qualifying, and also once during the warm up. So. Oh, so you're going to see it on the replay? Y you will see it, yeah. yeah, just, think, yeah uh, just keep sure. cool. You can watch it right stream. now also on the... Yeah. Oh, cool. Keep an eye on I the live stream, that. you will see it as we end. Uh, but yeah, it's always uh, fun to have you with us, John. Uh, very, very, very fun, funny guy to talk to. And <laughs> it's always uh, fun to have you around, John. I always appreciate your presence. Same for Nick Thank as well. You. 
Uh, you guys yeah, are yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We we always we always would expect you to be here and uh, chat with you, John and Nick and everyone else who wants to. Please feel free to do so. Feel free to join us in uh, simracingonline.co.uk. Sign up for free. Pick your car. Pick your game or factor two and start racing with us. It is everyone is welcomed. And uh, yeah, and keep an eye. This VOD will be posted once again in the YouTube channel of Sim Racing Online. Make sure you go there, subscribe to get all the latest VODs we do. Uh, yeah, that that's it for today. Uh, thanks everyone who watched this uh, stream, who is watching now on YouTube, or who's watching live with us. We appreciate your presence, and uh, we will see you in the next one. Uh, goodbye for now. Okay, bye bye. Yeah. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.